Envy is the crown indeed when you're an LCS champion. We've got Inspired here with us. They didn't buckle under the pressure. Inspired, how happy are you with your first win at World? Uh, I'm pretty happy. Um, we're a little bit nervous going into the game because we have uh, three players that are playing uh, for the first time at mm -hmm. Worlds. So it's a good start for us, I think. Uh, the nerves for the second game will probably be lower. We are kind of getting used to the stage. Uh, I played here already, yeah. but when I was playing here, it was completely different. Uh, like the experience right now was like, I don't know, just like night and day. It was so much different, the stage and like the fact that the crowd is in front of me and like, I don't know, I, I liked it. So overall, it was a good experience today. Yeah, I didn't look nervous, I want to say. Like yeah, West. not at all. In fact, you guys been here just like boot camping a little bit. Have you been able to like soak in Berlin just a little bit, as, as you said? Well, you he knows it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not really. I think mostly we're just practicing and, yeah. uh, and preparing for the games. So. Okay. Yeah, Raz. They're not very, <laughs> you think they're going to be tourists? <laughs> just checking Jesus. around. Jesus. <laughs> a little nostalgic. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to get into our last game of the day, and they finally got their win. The question is, will EU finally get their win as well? You might say, of course they will, Shocks. It's versus um, the CB Lol and Pain. And I got a tale to tell you. Uh, it's a tale that includes an alliance and a kaboom <laughs> and an EDG and an INTZ. So I'm just going to say. I can but feel this the is, trauma rising up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is our first seed out of the CB Lol. And absolutely huge DB that they made it through the play-ins. They set aside Rainbow Seven, who, of course, set aside Hunter Thieves. So they kind of, they took the, they took the assist. Up, huh? but yeah, but I mean, it's kind of the way they got out of play-ins, right? It's yeah. not just the fact that they were taking games of other minor regions. They're taking games of PSG as well. I mean, yeah, they didn't win the series, but they showcased that they have potential of taking games of opponents that on paper should be better than you. And I think they've really leveled up coming into this, well, play-ins and then now Tournament of Worlds as well, just because they have been able to play through their bot lane in a way that didn't get disrupted. Like they were actually able to do what yes. they did domestically. And I think that's what really stands out to me about this pain roster. Their star was for sure Chitan in the bot lane. He was just completely rolling, I would say, the Rainbow Sevens bot lane. And I think that's going to be the target going into today's games. And we've heard some things, some whispers of some, um, I don't know if it was like five mans or scrims inspired. Have you heard the same things about pain? Um, I mean, I saw them beating uh, BLG and uh, L uh, LNG players, I think, what? yesterday <laughs> in the Champions Queue. Yeah. So I was already, like, pretty impressed. And also, I played with uh, their ADC in Champions Queue, and he also seemed pretty good to me. Like, he's aggressive in lane. He plays all these aggressive champions. Like, I also saw him play Lucian Nami, which I think they didn't really play at Worlds yet. Mm -hmm. So... Leaked. <laughs> I mean, they beat PSG with it. They did. They beat PSG with it. It was, it was in, the, in the, uh, also Champions Queue, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm exactly. trolling, I'm trolling. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I think it's going to be a lot of fighting in the bot side because everyone knows Hansama Miki X playstyle. They are just going to trade you and it seems like uh, the the other team also have the same playstyle. So I think it's going to be very bloody down there. I agree with you. Hopefully we get a really exciting last game. Uh, and G2 is, of course, the LEC's first seed once again. Um, we know them very well. They've been together for 652 days. And yeah. I was kind of thinking a little bit about this. Um, remember T1? last year and not comparing G2 to T1. Hold whoa, your horses. Whoa, whoa, Hold your horses. Okay, okay. T1. Um, Think you know, about it. When we, talking, <laughs> when we were talking about how long that team had been together and how they really wanted that victory, of course, T1 got much closer um, than G2 did. But I have a similar feeling. For me, this G2, right now, it is put up or shut up. You know, you have worked now for two years towards this goal to be good internationally. You have put all your 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 thoughts and your preparation into it, as we hear from everyone in the coaching staff, we really need to see that big performance. No, absolutely, especially because they've had the failings they've had in international. We always say that once you go to an international, you fail, but at least they learn from it. But at some point, you have to have learned everything you can learn as a roster, where you bring that point of you actually being able to try and contest for it. And I, I agree with you. I'm not saying they're going to be T1 coming into this tournament, but I think a lot of people were a bit disappointed when, when we saw them last time, because the early game did not look the greatest, but late, luckily, their macro has always been good. And going into this World Championship, you're hoping they have fixed some of those early game issues. Yeah, and I think we have the, the big view here, of course, you know, when they go up and other opponents not saying they should underestimate pain at all because, you know, it happens. But Inspired, have you been able to, to, to scrim G2? What is your impression of them if you've been able to watch or do you just not care because you're in LCS uh, now? I mean, I did watch them for the whole season and they did look the most, like, the most clutch, clutch out of all the teams. 
Like, no matter what was happening in the regular season or in playoffs, at the beginning of the playoffs, I was like thinking, G2 is gonna win anyway. <laughs> like, they're just way too clutch for, for other teams. And in practice, they were not looking that great, sadly. Oh! So. But that's a good thing because they keep yeah, yeah, yes, exactly, because they keep exactly. winning scrims. They used to be the world champions exactly. of scrims. So if yeah. now it's opposite, maybe it's their time to shine. That's yeah. a W mentality right there. That's a W mentality. I mean, it is true. Maybe Ramal will post it and it'll be all losses, but they've they've gotten to the semifinals and that's fine with I'm me. I'm waiting for that post. <laughs> Still I'm reading in between the lines. FlyQuest is absolutely destroying G2. <laughs> there it is. And it's, it's actually kind of crazy because that was, it felt like a very similar story uh, for MSI, where it was like spring, I was like, oh, it's getting a little iffy for G2 uh, consistently in, in domestic play. But then they went to MSI and they had that boot camp and they performed on uh, next to some of the best. So I think it's going to look good. This is when the pressure is on, and they do well under pressure. This is what they came for. This is what they asked for, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Let's see. Thank you so much, Inspired, for joining us. Thank you. And good luck tomorrow. And now it's time for G2 versus Pain. All right, let's see if you can do the same. It looked good for Fly. It was clean for Fly. But uh, PNG, a very different team. Also mm -hmm. came through plans, but a lot messier or maybe a lot more strenuous. But, you know, CB Law made it this far. Now we have to see how much more damage they can do, because if they can beat G2, then my lord, this team will be the biggest question mark for whoever they go up against next. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's going to be really exciting. I mean, just for the CB Law fans, and there are so many passionate CB Law fans to see them at the Swiss stage. It has been eight long years since the CB Law team has been here, and it's been nine years since Payne made the group stage here as well. And G2, of course, the hometown favorites. They're getting a big cheer from the crowd. The G2 chants are coming out already. They want to see Europe kicking it off their number one seed here. They want to see domination because already Mad and Fnatic both fell. You want to have your number one team representing well. And the number one team that, by the way, if anyone didn't watch LEC this year, are number one by a large margin. Winter, spring, summer, season finals, all four shields were taken by G2. And every time there was a challenger like Mad or Fnatic that came up against them, G2 still, even with doubts, even with expectations being a little bit mid, were still able to clutch it out and be the better team. This is Europe's best hope at making a big run and making it out of Swiss. Exactly. I mean, and, and we heard Inspire talking about it, and I really did kind of resonate with him calling them just clutch, right? Because yep. at the end of the day, we saw G2 looking vulnerable in a lot of series, way more than I'm used to seeing. I mean, they I lost agree. the best of five to Fnatic, they lost the best of five to Mad, they almost got swept by BDS and then reverse swept, but you still <laughs> always feel like when you're watching G2, yeah, but they're going to pull it out. Yeah, yeah but they're going to come back. They're gonna yeah, but the they're going to win in the end. And a lot of that magic really is just caps. Let's yeah. be honest. This guy has been running the LEC for so many years. Last time Fnatic won a trophy, it was with caps. And ever since he's been on G2, they have picked up trophy after trophy after trophy after trophy. And they are looking to get back to those big international performances that they had, you know, back in, in, in the kind of 2019 era. I know it's going to hurt a lot of people, but he's the best player of the West. Now you can get out. Uh, uh, I don't think that's hurting angry. anyone. I think I, everyone agrees. But, well, they should at the very least, but uh, I don't know. I don't want to offend anyone. Anyway. You can offend. If they're offended by that, they need to watch back some okay, more he's the best player of the West. You know what? I shouldn't have held anything back. At least for now, though, we get a couple of those mid lane bands taken away from said man. But this time, Jinkieto's Akali was also pinched out of the pool, considering we saw that uh, a few times, actually, in the playing stage. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see exactly what pain comes out with. Uh, Chitan is, is a player who's been getting a lot of hype, a lot of excitement, you know, has been doing very well in Champs Q. A lot of yeah. people are pretty impressed with him. And let's be honest, he's just a really fun player to watch. When you watch him in the CP LoL and also how he played, he was able to bring this to the, the play in stage. He is so aggressive. He'll look for 1v1 kills. You know, if your supports are both roaming, he's going to try to fight you. He's going to try to go for those kills. He's going to look for the 2v2 outplays. And He's going to let you know about it if he does outplay you. They're jumping up on stage, they're popping off, and they're making those big moments here as G2 are going to get Yone, uh, which okay. has been looking so good so far. And again, Broken Blade plays this top, so definitely going to be a flex here. And the question of Aurora is going to be the same on the side of Pain Gaming as Karaoke on something to set up. The Maokai here, really solid pick 
But like karaoke has been someone to play Sedge, Maokai, you know, this is the guy that sets up some of these bigger carries. As we saw, something like the Sedge, the Maokai and the Skana picked up a few times here in the play-in stage. Yep, absolutely. I mean, it has really kind of maintained. Maokai has taken so many nerfs throughout the year, yeah. uh, but it just doesn't really go away because it sets up incredibly well for your team. It controls vision very, very well with saplings, um, and it makes it very difficult to deal with. And Yike bringing out the brand, it was his most played in summer. Uh, definitely did like a lot of those power farming AP junglers. Uh, this is another one of those picks, though, that people were kind of thinking had actually, you know, fallen out of meta. Yep. And when I look back at play-ins there was a couple plays of it you know just the three picks you know wasn't super popular um and hasn't been picked so far today but you know it is always a massive threat when you come up to the 5v5 brand if you get one full combo out get that ulti bouncing everywhere it is just such a nightmare to deal with well, Rel picked up for Mickey X as well, his most played. So we're talking about comfort here for G2, and especially when Mickey feels like such an important part to G2. I love seeing him on the snap engage. I love seeing him on the priority support here. While well, Smolder's picked up on the other side Ooh. by Pain Gaming, so we potentially have our solar laners. Big question mark as to whether that goes bot, but right now it's looking like mid and top are locked. Yeah, that's, it's definitely the assumption that it would be mid or yep. top, um, and it is just a possibility of, of where they're going to go, right? Like, are they going to flex this around? Because uh, Smolder can be played top as well, uh, you know, depending on the matchup, especially if it is, you know, a less threatening matchup. Like, if Broken Blade were to pick a tank or something, you can kind of just, like, go grass Smolder and farm stacks off them, which can be quite effective. Um, we'll see if Yike can really outpace Karaoke, because, you know, this brand, if you do get really ahead of the Maokai, obviously Maokai does have a decent clear, but did take some nerfs to that. You know, both these champions have taken some nerfs. Um, you know, you can start to really outpace the Maokai, especially because no one is really going AP Maokai these days. It feels like full supportive style. Um, and you can kind of get a ahead of them, you know, really just try to power farm and be a monster in those 5v5s. Now, while AD carries getting banned, focus towards the next picks, because here, Everyone at home probably saying, like, Chitan's Ezreal has been looked at in Champs Q, has been looking really good in the lead up mm. to Swiss stage. Maybe that's one of the takeaways here is Han Sama Draven, an absolute classic to be taken away here with already set up for a big 2v2 thanks to that heavy engage. Yeah, I mean, he has been so well known for that pick for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of his pocket picks that he always can bring out and really threaten you with. Uh, Ash obviously going to be banned away here by G2, starting to limit that AD carry pool. They did already ban out Lucian that was kind of talked about on the desk earlier on, and now Callista. So, banning out some of these kind of aggressive picks here for Chitan, um, both the Lucian and the Callista can be problematic. I don't really love the Zaya here, honestly, because I don't think G2 have hard committed to, to like a full dive comp. Um, you know, you could even just go something that's a little bit lower commitment in, in mid and, you know, put the you know, a top or, or something that is a little bit more kind of pokey from the AD carry. Yep. So I do think Zaya can really struggle into range. And I'm just kind of curious if G2 are going to full commit uh, to a dive comp or if they are going to draft a little There's bit range. more range here. And someone does exactly oh, that. Oh, okay. We get the brothers on the same it's the team. the wind bros. But I'm just going to leave this out there. Again, you can still flex this around, but you're kind of assuming, you're kind of assuming that Broken Blade's going to take his Yone top, caps Yasuo mid. I mean, against Smolder, it's in kind of the Corky effect, right? We saw a lot of Yasuo into Corky to deny the range and poke. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really interesting to see how G2 Where's do pull this off. They obviously have the Rel for setup, but you can also kind of set each other up here. Yeah. You know, there is the knockup from the Yone uh, for that Yasuo as well. This is going to be really exciting here. Broken Blade has brought out the Yasuo in the past as he well. Has. He used to bring it out, you know, as kind of a NAR counter pick, and he's very good on it. Yeah, that's a really good point you just brought up, Azale. He's pulled it out actually more, two to that note as well. Caps only once here in the course of 2024. So yeah. it does look like it will be BB taking that up into the top side to deal with the Aurora. I love that you also mentioned something like the Nah, you know, utilizing range in the matchup as well. Aurora very good at poking out, clearing waves. Maybe this will be a new tech here for BB, as we know G2. They're very good at applying new tech when you least expect it. I mean, when you think of G2 at their best, it's always when they are creative. It's always yeah. when they're unleashing with these drafts. You know, they were just so well known for having so much confidence. You think to like Pike solo lanes, and you think to all this creativity and flexibility that they showcased over so many years. Even back when Perks was playing AD for the team and they're bringing Mage's bot, they're doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Now, that's G2 at their best. And this is going to be a really exciting start here. I do worry for the early levels here of uh, the Yasuo against 
Aurora, I wonder how confident he's going to be to just kind of dash in and trade, because you also can just start E in some of these matchups and just kind of just run sure. up and start mailing you. I don't know exactly how this matchup does go, uh, but generally Aurora has a really good time, gets a lot of the melee matchups, and melees do need to kind of survive with Resolve, with Second Wind, with D-Shield, and you're kind of looking to get some levels in before you can really start winning these trades. Then you're trying to chunk out the Aurora and be able to put her low enough health that you can threaten something like that all in. If you can't do that and you just kind of try to sit back and farm, it becomes very, very oppressive because she can poke and prod under the tower and it can become a bit of a nightmare. Well, Wiser versus BB just got more and more interesting as we get into our last game of the opening day of Swiss here at Worlds 24. And my eyes light up because I see G2 trying to be innovative yet again. As Isaiah just said, this is the bread and butter of this team. This yeah. is what's made them so interesting. And I think at Worlds and even at MSI, right, the adaptation to what they see in the meta, they're like, okay, we're going to try and pull this out and see if it sticks, is always what makes this team unreliable in such a good sense for the enemy team. Yeah, unpredictable is what I would say. That's a better yeah. word. Not, un <laughs> not unreliable, unpredictable is what yeah, I would yeah, say yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, because... G2, especially if they come out and if they look really dominant with this kind of draft, then no matter who draws them for the next game, whether or not G2 is planning on bringing it out again, you have to worry about it. And that sure. is the trick against these kind of teams that can bring out flex picks and bring out these really interesting skill matchups is all of a sudden that's in the back of your head like, ooh, should we pick this? What if they play Yasuo top? Does yeah, that actually can. ruin our draft? You know, it's always going to be kind of weighing on you. So the G2, now they have to execute. They've gone with a cool draft. You cooked it up. If you can really make it work and crush pain here, then people are going to stand up and take notice of these picks. Well, on the other side, for Karaoke, remember, he's got the Maokai again. He's got a facilitating jungler again. And for PNG, their biggest surprise coming through planes, their way to beat R7 with some of these carries that came through. I think Wiser on Jax has had a really good setup at the start of Worlds. Chitan has been an insane 80 carry. And here on the Zyre again, he's got scaling. He's got team fight presence once more. And while, you know, we do have to really credit, you know, Payne for being able to make it here. And, and, you know, that definitely is a massive accomplishment. At the same time, let's be honest, their series against R7 was incredibly sloppy. It was. And G2 is such a good team on the map that even when they fall behind, and they didn't really have a good early game, to be honest, in the LEC. When you think back to even some of the Fnatic series, it's like three times in a row they beat Fnatic, giving up monster early game leads. Yep. They are so good on the map. They really know how to spread you out and take advantages in the macro game. And I think Payne is really going to struggle against that. So you know, even if Payne can set themselves up well, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to you know, result in a victory here because G2 really can run the map, know exactly how to play out these situations and are very clever, very clutch. So, you know, I think Payne is pretty reliant on creating advantages here, but they do have some good scaling and we'll see how many stacks this Smolder can get in that 1v1. And yes, it's a melee matchup, but Yone is pretty evasive and can be a little bit annoying sometimes to be able to trade with. Oh yeah, and when his all-in comes through, it is uh, absolutely complete. On the note of G2, by the way, I mean, such a great point that the early game Always felt like a weakness, and over the course of this year, they were talking about working on their mid game, and their mid game became so concrete mm -hmm. that that's what the nuisance is, that's what the annoyance is when you talk about the likes of Fnatic going head to head with them. There's some good trades come down here on the bot side. Now, Hunt Summit was engaged on before, but they just pull back and get some damage down as Kuri and Titan just walk it back themselves. Caps walks into Jinkiero, but some autos come through, it's an even trade. Yeah, and you can see how much faster Yike cleared. Karaoke is just now finally killing his Gromp, whereas the first the first scuttle is already dead from yep. Yike. So he's more than a full camp ahead because he walked all the way there. Karaoke is going to cross map though and going to be able to get the top side one because Wiser has push. Uh, Jinkato pushed in caps mid uh, and is getting a decent amount of stacks there. Already has 18 already. Uh, so that is quite nice. Yes, there is a big focus on just perfect CS and being able to farm stacks off that. But if you can scrap, it accelerates your stacking so incredibly fast on this champion. So when you are playing into melee matchups, it can really accelerate you to the point where you're hitting these breakpoints faster, and then all of a sudden that's making you farm even faster. You hit 25 faster now. You have the AOE, it's easier yeah, to yeah. get all the range minions. Then you're hitting, you know, 125, and all of a sudden you're getting, you know, more and more splash through that's giving you more stacks. It can really kind of ramp up and accelerate. Complicates things as well. Karaga hasn't made his back yet as he still continues to try and clear out. He's sitting on the same margin as Broken Blade just walks up into top and runs into Wise up. 
Uh, this matchup so far, it feels like there was a small CS advantage for Wiser before as Broken Blade gets his push in, and of course there will be. Mm -hmm. Considering 32 to 31 with his full wave into Wiser means this Aurora has a small CS lead. Yep, but BB doing well. Really, you just have to survive generally in these matchups. It usually does get better for you uh, as the melee into the range, as you uh, are starting to be able to get some attack speed. You know, obviously your Q cooldown goes down a lot. You can start to push. You can start to be able to actually take trades more effectively. And Broken Blade is playing Grass. If you haven't seen that, uh, Fleet got nerfed for range, but a lot of people really started trying Grass, and it kind of just became very, very popular across a lot of champions. You know, we saw it even from uh, Zekka earlier on Yone. It's playing played on range champions and being played on melee champions. Yeah. People are just honestly really liking Grass kind of across the board, and you can see that over on the pain side as it is Grass Smolder and Grass Aurora as well. It's like when Lethal Tempo started getting explored with, and everyone's like, oh, I can run this on this champion as well. <laughs> it's like it's, it's possible anyway. Uh, feels like Captain Molish has been for a while as a subset of a rune anyway. Plus, I swear, just the runes like that just give you dopamine because the number just yeah. keeps going up and you're just getting health every time you proc oh, it. Yeah. It's a massive dopamine proc, isn't it? But yeah, it feels so good to proc grasp. And the sound is kind of satisfying it as well. It really is. And it's, but I've killed myself way too many times. I'm trying to get a stack. Yeah, I'm like, ooh, I like can take this trade here. Like, <laughs> that's like how you felt about Dark Harvest. You're like, oh man, but I can get a stack here. It's worth Jungle it. Jungle might die. be in the bush. But I could proc grasp. <laughs> yes. It feels so good as Grubs start off at G2. They move up to top first. So they're going to pick this up in the course of three. And you already just talked about the power of Yike. This just comes into fruition yet again. Three picked up. And Corey, even though he's here to try and roam around, Mickey just forces him out. Yep, going to be able to push him back. Yike just power farming thus far. And in a great spot already, three grubs, uh, outpacing what the Maokai is able to do. And again, Maokai just going to be going for this trade on bot side, which has become the standard. But G2 walk through mid, get the push there. And now it looked like they just pull off the dragon. They give up. They're going to try to turn on Yike. Yike's walking blind. He just gets altered from another world, but he's still not dead. The fate shield saves his life. First blood goes over as Dinkieto and makes himself known to get the trade kill. Caps doesn't have anything more in the bank. He flashed away, and G2 get the first blood, but they're quickly traded upon. Yeah, they do get that first blood, but it does cost them the flash off Caps, the flash off Yike, and Yike does die. But critically, Yike using that XP advantage because he was six. Yeah. And if you don't insta kill a brand who's level six, gets one combo of spells out, and you are are gonna really pay for it. So was able to do just that. And it does mean that Pain gave up the attempt at a dragon, right? Because they pulled off that dragon, so there's no objective trade. It's just the one for one in kills. And G2 end up getting the grubs before that. So they are feeling very good, I think, about that overall. And Yikes got a lot more to clear as well. Look at the camps mm -hmm. on the other side, still respawning for Karaoke. You mentioned the levels. Karaoke only just ticked over to six. Yike will be halfway through as he clears his top side and his PNG continue keeping their bot in the top to keep that trade in action. Yeah, I mean, Grubs obviously does give you the bonus XP, but Karaoke also invested time hitting Dragon, yep. didn't end up getting anything from that. So that's the time he could have been spending doing something else, farming additional camps, getting that experience. So, you know, Yike already has the components there for the Leandries, gonna be looking really really powerful when he does compete that first item. And Hans just up on top side here with Mickey pushing that in. You can see obviously the top laners have swapped down to bot. Now, there is a slight CS lead for Wiser, but nothing really to worry about. And Caps now has tier two boots, has Vamp Scepter. Yep. So he's not really going to be getting poked out. Um, for Jinkato, again, it's just about really farming the stacks. And he's doing a pretty good job of it, uh, he up to about 60. But you know, it's nothing insane at this point. Um, and we'll see if he can continue to accelerate that. I feel like a lot of small will just get away with the lane. As also known as we get around this dragon, Mickey is almost level six. Is, you know, this is a nice quote. I know you set this up as well mm -hmm. because we're, we're talking about G2's expectations on a player who has been alongside this roster, as they said, for over 650 days. Like, th this could be another great chance for EU. Absolutely. And I mean, they're putting that pressure on themselves. You know, this is not something they're saying like retroactively after they already did well. Yep. I also saw something very similar from Broken Blade, where they're basically saying, you know, we've been together for a couple years now. And basically, if not now, when? Like, yeah. we have got to do it now. We've got to have those international performances, and we'll see if they can find it now. We'll play like this. I mean, quickness comes through. Remember, Mickey's not level six yet. There is no oh. Magnet Storm available. He was one minion off, but as the curtain call sets up with the Seer and the flash away from Karaoke, there's no kill in response. Pain, get one and get away. And I will say this is one of the bad habits that we did see from Mickey, you know, Mickey at times this yeah. year. Uh, did get a little bit, uh, let's say, loose with it on some of his engages. Mickey XDD, 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, did end up giving over a lot of kills. This time gives a bit of a freebie over to Payne, but G2 still in the driver's seat. You know, they are going to be scaling well. It's just such a big question about how will you engage, how will you be able to pull this off on the G2 side. Of course, Mickey X can be setting them up. The Caps can also potentially set up Broken Blade. He can also set up himself up. Um, the counter engage, though, is pretty difficult to deal with because if you're sending in both the Yasuo and the Yone, well, all of a sudden, Rakan can be there with the counter engage. You can be getting hit by Aurora. There can be the roots from Maokai. There's lots of lockdown. And your main target, you know, Chitan, is, is very difficult to actually get because of the Zaya ult. So you're going to have to be looking more towards Jin Kato, uh, who does have the safety, of course, of the flap. And counter engage is huge when you talk about Aurora in the mix as well. I mean, yeah. zone control from this champion is nuts. And there's a reason it starts getting banned more and more. When I see it left open, I think, what is your response for this? G2 cooked with the Yasuo, okay, for the laning phase, or at least beyond that, as you said, it needs to stay safe. But my concern is always when we get to these skirmishes, these fights, and what Aurora so far at Worlds has shown us. That champion is broken, and that champion, when able to zone out two or three people, changes the whole course of a team fight. Absolutely, but Windwall also going to be really strong here. You can't just throw out the Maokai ult, because Windwall could actually block that. You know, that's, that's going to be really strong, also against double AD carries. As G2 looking to set up a dive, Wiser is very low. Karaoke trying to come in. That's still Tempest needs a hit for the last breath, but Karaoke gets caught out in the mix as well. This time the Max Storm is up and available, so G2 have more to work with. But there we go. The ulti we talked about quickly disengaged from G2. Know that now they have the turning play. The last breath is going to be the last tip for Wiser in this fight, as they'll just take everything in the kitchen sink. A good punish from G2. Yeah, really well done there by G2. Great map movement. They wrap around behind him. And even though Karaoke tries to come cover the dive, Wiser's just too low to really contribute too much to the fight. So, you know, he gets caught out. Wiser can't really do much back. G2 playing the map. As I said, they're so good at playing the map. Yeah. And they just set this fight up really well. BB trades heavily onto Wiser. Karaoke gets caught. And if you get stunned, you are getting full comboed by the brand. And that is going to destroy you as a tank. So even though Wiser comes over, drops the ulti, they try to get this opportunity to peel. Just really, there's no recourse. And, and Zale, the, the recourse doesn't come through also because the ult at level 1 is only 1.25 seconds, right? Yeah. It's so quick. And there's not much you can do to build around it as G2. Obviously finding the play there and Payne getting pushed behind. You brought it up earlier in the game how quick Yike was to the setup here as Broken Blade has to flash away. Went in a bit too deep as now it becomes a 1v2. But Yike is 30 CS up. Yike is 1.5k up. And I know in champ's queue, this guy has been cooking on more than just Brand. Yike has been having a good setup to run into this world as I it mean, is. Brand is just such a nightmare when it gets this far ahead. You, know, yeah. you get a, two, a quick two items, you get level 11. All of a sudden, it's just like, yeah, okay, great. We dealt with the Yasuo, we dealt with the Yone, but some random brand bounces just killed our whole team. Like, you know, it just <laughs> what happened? It, it can happen to you. It can get very, very annoying. And G2 has such a clear, easy to execute comp. Like, well, not, I shouldn't say it's easy to execute, but clear idea of how they want to execute the Press comp, buttons, right? right? Exactly. I mean, you open up with the Jin ult, you're flying forward with the Rel. There's a brand ult bouncing around. You know, Yone and Yasuo are going in. Windwall is protecting them from the AD carries. It's a very clear idea of what they want to do. Uh, of course, if you do misstep on the Yone or the Yasuo, uh, it can be very difficult um, and can get turned around on you. But, oh, the cops getting a little bit spicy here. Looking for the setup. It's a fate sealed. Karaoke just disengages. He took phase rush into the battle, so Caps will ult for the trade. Yeah, he wanted to try to steal away that camp because Karaoke early smited on the Krugs. So Caps trying to get a little bit spicy with it. Does get jumped on as Jinkato and Curry trying to move down here. But G2, again, they're just going to play the Look map. They're going to run you in circles here. Tower's gone. Six grubs. It shreds. I mean, in the early game again, and I feel like we've had three of these games today where there's been nice back and forth trading. The PSG one hits to mind. But the map state and the way that G2 have played it here is obviously so far superior, yeah. 4k gold lead at coming up to 14 minutes when it has been a bit back and forth and kills, it ain't the same way with the way that they're playing the map state. Exactly. I mean, G2 are just really showing their class on, on their macro and how they play the map. I mean, great. Pain are, are fighting pretty well, but it doesn't matter if you're just getting destroyed on the map movements. You know, you're losing the grubs, you're losing these towers left, right, and center. They're now 4,000 gold behind here. They're only up to one kill, but they are very far down. 11 turret plates yeah. went the way of G2. And so now that advantage is getting bigger. Double Blade the Rune King oh is completed for Broken Blade and Caps. They're twinning on the items. Have yeah, the exact are. same ones completed there. And Cute. 
Hans has done one. We already know Yike has been completed on one for a while, so Pain are going to get the Dragon, but can they get out? Well, the question is that with the curtain call, MasterCard, we don't have time because we're going to fight this one out. It's set up central for Broken Blade to get the last breath, and Karaoke is going to be abandoned by Pain. G2 give another kill, or rather their first kill, over to the top lane. Yep, going to be able to grab that one, and G2 going to be feeling really good about it. Again, Maokai, your ult is really hard to use it is. if you can't actually force out the wind wall first. There's almost no value from it, so Broken Blade just wind walls that. They walk right through it. You can even do some some builds where you cook with, like, Flicker Blade, where you have a really low wind wall CD, uh, which some Yasuo like are actually really liking against comps like this, where it gets a ton of value. Oh my God. And look at the trades. I mean, that's with Broken Blade taking a tower shot that he doesn't care about because he can just life steal up off of the wave. And uh, Jin Kato... Only at the 130 or so stacks. I mean, it's, it's not bad, but it's is, not is enough still to gonna overcome be running? exactly. It's at at like, this point, it's the biggest question. Is the game still going to be going? Oh, they're going to commit to this. From pain. You mentioned, Azale, that the commitment is there, but I'm a little bit worried. At least the ult comes through and Yike is caught out. The most fed member of G2 is down. A pyroclasm thrown out on his deathbed, but Broken Blade and Mickey are running afar. There's going to be no last breath here after the setup from the Steel Tempest, and G2's jungler is dead. But look at mid, right? This is the problem again. You're overcommitting. You're sending five members down. If they got all three in they got the bot lane tower, great. But you're getting one, you're TPing, you're spending alts, you're spending flash ignite on Curry. You're losing your mid lane tier one. You're losing minions top. You're losing your Krugs now as well as Caps is going to farm those away. So sure, you got a kill, but you fell more behind in gold off the play at the end of the day. GG's early game here is a really nice setup. Coming in, we criticized it. And of course, anyone who watched LEC all year would say that it was probably their weak point. Here against PNG, it has been a nice snapshot. Yeah. To the, to the setup of their tournament. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're definitely looking really good. I mean, G2, let's be honest, come into this big favorites. This is uh, the LEC number one seed. Favorites you know, to win it all. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Win it all against Pain Gaming, yes. Yeah, okay, thank um, you, Zell. I mean, you know, this is a, a, a team that, you know, their expectations, even from the own players, are saying, mm -hmm. you know, we want to win the whole thing. We want to win worlds, right? Yeah. And uh, Pain, you know, they haven't even been able to make it to the, the Swiss stage in quite a long time. They did do it this time, and that is obviously incredible for them. But G2 is definitely at a different level than the teams they did fight in the play-in stage. True. So they need to really step it up here. And they have got to really not only execute on these fights, which I think they're doing fine. They're playing fine in the skirmishes. But they've got to make sure that they're answering the map movements here from G2. Or you can keep winning every fight, but you're going to lose the game. Yeah, slowly but surely, right? Gold lead will keep track of. Top of your screen, you can all see it at home, but at least Payne have been able to get the Dragons. That's one thing in the backcourt. Two minutes, mm -hmm. ten till the third. That can start pressuring here. There's a mixture of fans in the audience today, and I love it. I mean, G2 fans always get a, a, a massive crowd, but Payne off the side still. Their fans are loud and proud, and you can see why. To make it this far, I mean, it's been so. It, it's been such a long ride for them. Yeah. And again, it was so well earned. It was a messy game, but against LLA, you know, they were the team that stood, stood fast a lot better. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, they did show up when it mattered most and uh, have rightfully earned their spot here. And we'll see how much further they can go. And if they can try to claw this one back against G2, you saw that gold difference. And it's just been kind of up and to the right. Boy. As, uh, that's just a couple spells ulti. there. Okay, between two worlds and set up as Wiser has done a good ulti, but the setup from Mickey might be better. A last breath to send a world all the way to another universe. A curtain call to call it a night. And G2 are always willing to take the fight. Yeah, Ping trying to look for the engage there. It's a, a good initial look, but again, the wind wall just gets insane it value so right. against what they are doing. And at the end of the day, they can't even finish off Broken Blade. He's able to flash out and look at Jin Kato not having fun well, over there against Caps. Flashes away and Caps almost gets a solo kill. A grasp to just tickle his fancy on the side while in a turret on the bot side, dead. Caps with another wave gets top and that's dead too. Mid wave is pushing in and everything is going G2's way in this debut. I mean, it's already been just a map master class here. You know, how they want to play the map. They're moving around. They're taking all of these camps away. They're taking the towers away. They're playing yep. the map so well. So when you start winning the fights too, well, then there's not a lot going for pain. And G2 showcasing that they can do just that. I know I'm, I'm looking at Hope Him, but NA and EU's first seed debut has been really good. Yes. And I, know, I know a lot of the time the debut looks good because I, I feel like, again, you know, they come through with good meta reads. I think, you know, G2 and Fly have obviously been a bit more adaptive as well. 
in their drafts, but it's been good all the same. It has. It has definitely been good. But you look at some of these teams that won today, there's not a lot of easy draws. And it, gets, <laughs> it does always become that funny situation no. where FlyQuest is sitting there and they're like, well, if G2 wins, I'd really like to draw G2. And, G and G2 is sitting there and saying, well, I'd really like to draw Black yeah, yeah. West. Um, and both teams kind of end up wanting to play against each other. Because, yep. you know, do you want to play against BLG? Do you want to play against Gen.G? Do you want to play against HLE? Oh, you want to play? You know, it's really rough out there in those 1-0 matches. So if G2 are able to close this one up, uh, it's going to get a lot tougher for yep. them. You know, both FlyQuest and G2 uh, were recipients of teams from play-ins because they were number one seed. So yep. that's kind of the benefit that they got. And it does mean you get a game that's it's going to kind of ease you into the competition a little bit more. Sure. But then it's a very steep jump in competition because as Swiss Stage works, if you're one and zero, you only play another one and zero team. And those are all beasts. And there's no rematches. Remember, unless it's mathematically impossible that you have to have the rematch, but we're assuming that, that that choice won't come up, that chance won't come up, and no rematches is also very big, depending on how pain goes, depending on teams like how Gam goes as well. If things go rough, it ends up being a 1-1, one -one, then you won't face them again. But for this game, it's still not over. I mean, Pain a 7k gold down. Let's be real, this game is looking real rough with Dragon stacking now stopped, thanks to G2 getting the Ocean Dragon. So Pain needs some kind of wombo, some kind of dream in this game, some kind of smolder stacking miracle as he gets the execution that they can fall back and find some gold back in this final game of the day. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough because even if he gets the stacks right now, then you really are still waiting for rapid fire. And yeah. there's just so much threat over on the G2 side that it's like, okay, if you're even on gold or you're a little bit ahead on gold for Pain, then it's very tough to execute for G2 because they have to be so perfect to be able to pull it off. But when you're you know, closing in on 8,000 gold lead this early on, and they're probably going to get the Baron here as well, well then you are really in a lot of trouble over on the Pain side. Karaoke spotted on a ward and trouble might be the middle name of G2 as they look for a turn. They fake take it or rather fake start it and walk away. Well, look at Caps. This is the problem. It's again the map. Pain overcommit <laughs> everyone to You're one right. side they're always overloading because they feel that they're behind so they're saying okay we're behind we need to group and get a man advantage yep. and gg's saying great we're not going to fight you and they're just going to take things in the side lane so it becomes this kind of catch 22 where pain feels we can't win an even man fight but we can't actually be able to get a fight you know yeah. so it's it's like really really difficult because they just send five members to one side G2 takes more of an advantage in the side lane, they get nothing from it. And it's just kind of, kind of rinse and repeat uh, this entire game as G2 are constantly willing to go to those side lanes and uh, Pain just can't match. It's push and pull, and especially with two items as well. For G2, they are shredding these waves so quick. Their brother's building the same as well, by the way. So Broken mm -hmm. Blade with the strike break a second. A lot of chase, a lot of sticking potential here for the solo landers of G2 as they just return back to it. As you said, we just do it again. Look at where Caps is back. With the teleport available, he goes to bot. PNG yep. now have to be here to be around the Baron, but G2 aren't going to start it. They're just no. going to go la la la. Exactly. I mean, you just keep putting pressure on it, right? If you clear all the vision and Pain aren't respecting the Baron, you start hitting the Baron. You don't have to commit to it. If they ignore it, you take it for free, but if you if you then get found out, you can just keep it leashed until they respond, right? If Wiser TPs or they overcommit, you can either look for a turn or you can just take that win of getting the teleport out, of getting some small little thing. As look at Wiser, he does not like that 1v1. That's an alt traded, and he was getting obliterated. At least the ult was traded, but as he teleports in, or if he does, Wiser not having that's going to be a bigger deal. Nice seer set up with the blaze and Karaoke takes a bit of HP as well. Ignite burnt by Mickey as G2 still hover around this enemy jungle looking for that next pick. Oh, they're actually looking for it right now. There's an execute there, so they're going to take the quickness. At least it's the Hail Mary, and this time around again, the Nature's Grass gets a target. Mum flies through as well, but how far ahead are they? Broken Blade with a last breath takes out two before himself. Jinkieto flashes out. He's trying to kite around some big plays from this mid smolder and a shutdown to boot. Jinkieto's alive for now until Caps rocks on up and takes him down. Two left of G2 is the best you can hope for when Payne was so far behind. Yeah, Payne honestly doing a pretty good job there. It is a three for four, but at the end of the day, G2 stands strong. Their jungler is alive, their mid laner is alive, and that means the Baron is not long for this world. But Wiser trying to stop them. There's so much damage though. Can he escape Death. the wrath of Caps? G2's hopes and dreams with another one. And G2 sitting there confidently is a great, 
great start. At the very least, though, he does push them off the Baron, and Corey's able to get vision of that. Cool stat uh, that I, I was curious because oh, I yeah. didn't remember ever seeing Yoni and Yasuo together you know, in a game. The stat team did check and confirm. It's the first time Yoni and Yasuo has ever been played together internationally in League of Legends. Wow. So uh, definitely cooking here on the G2 side. Not that we needed that stat to confirm it, but it is cool to see they're the first team to ever actually bring it out internationally. It and I mean, for the comp, it's worked seamlessly. They've been inside really well. for the majority of the game, and then they just join in all in, and the all ins have been hitting. Mm -hmm. And then you can see Jinkato working towards that rapid fire. That is where things start to get a lot more problematic for the other side, as you can kind of just become this poke champ. You just kind of straight back and forth, wait for rapid fire procs, and then you use that, obviously, on your Q. You're putting it on that true damage burn, and you're kind of poking and prodding, trying to push your opponents lower and lower and get them into a rough spot here. Yeah. Uh, Shitan does have a very high DPS build here. Obviously, the IE and the S3 are done, but you look over on the other side, and three items are really starting to come through for pretty much everyone. Yike even has a Banshee's Veil, which means it's even harder to get any sort of a pick, which you would kind of be depending upon. Um, and Hans is super strong on three. Caps is super strong on three. So uh, G2 obviously still massively in the lead here. About 9k is their advantage. Um, but Pain... Getting a little bit of hope, I would say, after a fairly even fight yeah. over on that top side, even though Caps wasn't there at the start. It was in the same position where G2, it got a little bit messy, and Payne would take that every day of the week. You mentioned the gold lead again, 9,000 a lot to work with, and yeah, Caps, here comes the push. Look, Broken Blade's in the top lane as well. And Pain is just struggling for vision to try and claw some out of G2's hands. I mean, it's just so hard. G2 just, just has to sit here and wait for Caps to do his work. Neither of the soul leaners from Pain can do anything about the One. We saw that Wiser couldn't touch him at all. And definitely, Jinkato cannot win that 1v1 unless Caps make a serious mistake, or really a series of serious mistakes. So now G2 start this up again, and Caps is just going to go for it, keep pressuring. He's going to be able to get that inhibitor, no problem. And now Pain are going to have to decide, do we challenge here? What do we do? Because Caps will just run and end the game. Nature's Grass starts it off and as you said, the wind wall is such a pain. Mickey gets the engage. Cap still hangs around. The wave disappears while Mickey goes down, but a pyroclasm that sets the fight alight. And now for G2, the question is whether they're all right. Caps is holding both waves at once and with range in the making as well, G2 are just keeping them at bay. Yeah, Chitan is able to get that one kill onto Mickey, so not bad by pain. Um, but you are always going to lose that inhibitor on the bot side. So now that is going to make holding the barrier even more difficult. Chitan, his ulti was burned and Broken Blade just closes the gap. An easy one. Thanks to Han Summer with the support. Wise is still here as well in G2. Let's dance around Baron. Mumbo number five. Yeah, nicely done there by G2. Broken Blade just commits the flash. Hans opens up. And then when the curtain call is coming through, you basically are, are forced to be juking back and forth from the side there. But Payne not going to give this one up. The question is is can they actually get a fight here before Caps just ends the game? Because Caps is not coming. He's not. If someone doesn't base, you have to decide, are you going to hard engage here right now, or are you going to answer Help. Caps? Two people backing away to deal with him. He just walks on up with six grubs. Half health on the Nexus Tower. It's Baron still going down, by the way, and this time it might be for real. Karaoke needs a miracle steal while they commit to Caps, and he's just going to leave it. It'll go down. No contest. And Caps gets out on the side of your screen. The Red Bull Baron power play. This is how G2 will take the game to a win. Yeah, they're looking really strong. Caps just so dominant in the side lanes there. Payne make the call. Okay, we can't contest Baron. We're going to overload the side lanes. And both of our solos back instead of just one. And we're going to look yeah. to try to get a pick with the Aurora ult. But Caps just ults out of it. No problem. Almost knocked down a Nexus Tower as well. And was never even close to being in danger to going down there. So again, G2 just pulling them apart not allowing Payne to really find anything here. They have no answer for either of the win bros here on G2. The so win bros. It's so tough, man. You're yeah. just getting pulled apart. It's really nice to see. You know, since Which is your favorite win bro? I think it's Yone now. Yeah. I played too much Yone top. I watched Zayas too much and I fell into the degeneracy, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, it was really funny to me. Coming it is also today. much easier and I think much more overpowered. Yeah. <laughs> you reckon it's easy? It's, it's I think it's way easier than Yasuo. Yeah, it's easy to int on Yasuo, isn't it? But you can yeah. still int very easily on Yone if you know you how. You can, but you can just press E and then you can always go back. Oh, uh, yeah. The problem is with Yasuo, I can't go back. Yeah, that's right. Where's the minion? I can go in, but I can't. True. I usually I'm dead after that. Actually, maybe it is easier. So I need to change to Yasuo. Okay, point taken here. At the end of Swiss, I hope we see some more at the very least, like 
We've talked up innovation from G2. It's what we expected. We know they have so much more in their pocket, by the way. This is only the go. beginning as Nature's Grasp again. Wind wall, wind wall. Sail. Walk me through it. There it is. Between two worlds as well. Zones and down. Mum does a bit, but Mickey's engaged. Gives a nice last breath to Pain Gaming. That's because they can't breathe anymore as Broken Blade ran all the way in to give Mickey a death. The Fate Sealed won't connect, but G2 are now playing coy. PNG stuck in their base while the bottom wave is going to start crashing in. Yeah, it's going to get so difficult for them with all of these waves pushing in. Pain do still have their two main carries alive here, though, so a little bit of wave clear is available to them, but you said it. Super's coming in bot, the Baron up wave in mid, in top. They just can't be everywhere at once. They can't clear this out fast enough. And even the <laughs> wind wall protecting the Baron up cannon oh, is annoying. pretty annoying. As you can see, even more damage being dealt to this Nexus Tower. Karyoko trying to hold mid there. They're trying to get as much gold as possible into these carries, but look at Caps. He even went dead, man. So, oh, yeah. Uh, so he's really cooking. Wants the additional move speed there on it. And uh, it's going to be extremely annoying to deal with. One tank in the game, right? Who's, who's going to do the damage? Well, Smolder. <laughs> well, thankfully, the majority of that is still AD. And with the Zyre as well, Caps can just run on in. That's the, the bliss of Yone, isn't it? You can build things like um, Jack Show. You can build Dead Man's, Randuin's. He's got so many builds out there, the versatility is just insane. Yeah, I mean, he, he now has the move speed from the Dead Man's, plus your E gives you that 10% move speed when yep. you do E in. Um, so it has a, even additional mobility. He has double life steal items. There's quite a bit of HP on the Stride Breaker. So uh, you're not going to 100 to 0 him. You're not going to out duel him. And it just gets really, really difficult for them. Uh, G2 playing it slow and steady, but oh, definitely yeah. have been in full control of this one for a very long time. That's why I was excited before. Fly the same last game. G2 the same this game. Although very different games and very mm -hmm. different compositions. It just feels like the first seed of both EU and NA have come into today so well prepped and like no overforcing. We like to see it. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's some of the most fun parts of Worlds is you can have two teams that are obviously very good teams, yep. but play completely completely differently, right? And I think that showcases the depth of the game, of League. And then you get to go to Worlds, you get to see these teams match up potentially, and kind of have this clash of styles, right? Yeah. You know, which style is better, which draft is better, which player is better. Like, these are the fun things about Worlds, getting to have some of those questions answered. And uh, it's just it's just great to watch. It really is, especially when they're performing well. G2 moments away from moving up to the one and zero. And us again, don't forget, Swiss Draw comes in right after our broadcast today. It's the best part of the day. It is. You sit there and you're like, what's going to happen next? Ever since we brought this format in, I have been such a big fan. Like, yeah. The draws also make it so much more fun. It, it, it actually makes the end of the day one of the highlights of the day, yeah, right? It, like it, it makes it really exciting as you are praying for specific draws. You're yep. hoping to dodge opponents. You're hoping for you know, specific matchups. And especially if you drop game one, uh, then you are really hoping to get a good matchup oh. in the second one. Mickey all inning on this. Now, Chitan has his ulti and flash available, but they just wanted to pull it out. Ignite is so strong, and the fourth shot would be even stronger. Kuri needs to protect Chitan. They get him anyway! Oh. Han Sama from the Secret Service, or what? <laughs> Han just bends the bullet, snipes out Chitan, leaving no doubt about who the better AD is. Oh, the last breath as well. What a way to end the show as Jinkieto finds Mickey, it might not be over for pain for now, but the fate sealed into the back gets wiser. Caps with a beautiful knockup. The fate indeed sealed in another way as Hans in style helps out with that last kill. It looks to be a TP to end here as Caps or Rala, Broken Blade, walks towards the Nexus Turrets. Yeah, G2 have been splitting the map all game, but there's no more map left for Pain to play in. It's a clean entrance for EU's first seed as the Wind Bros, to put it as the Zale said, open us up with a 1-0 start. The end of Swiss Day 1 could not be more clean. EU and A both getting a win on the board here to close things out. Both the number one seats will advance. And now they can be really happy about that. They can breathe a sigh of relief here. First step on the road here is done for G2. 
and they can look forward now to the draw to finding out who their next yeah. opponent is. And again, there are so many sharks in the 1-0 waters, man. There are so yeah. many ridiculously tough teams, but those are the kind of teams that G2 wants to take down. And those are the kind of teams that you must be able to take down if you want to achieve the goals that they have set for themselves. When you're talking about if not when, you know, if not now, when, yeah. you know, you're talking about winning worlds. You're talking about having that international success. You have got to be able to beat those big dogs and they're going to have their opportunity. There's so many big rosters at this tournament and it's great to see that, you know, we can include G2 as one of them. And again, I've got EU bias. I don't deny that, especially being on the home stage here. Right where we cast G2 every are a week. fun team, man. They are it's really okay. fun. It's okay to, to love it, that team. It's nice because, again, they pull out drafts like this and you go, well, we just had a Yasuo top in their debut game in Swiss. And it looked clean. And, and the draft had, you know, a lot of merit to it as well. Yeah. They weren't just cooking for the sake of it. They weren't disrespecting their opponent. Uh, they pulled out something out of the hat. And again, they showcased how well they can play the map, yep. right? And I think that is what it was really all about. You know, yeah, Payne won some fights. Yeah, Payne got some kills. Um, but G2 were always running away with the advantages on the map. You yep. know, they overload one side. G2 is not panicking. They're taking towers. They're slowly chipping away at you. That is about as close to as a true split push victory as you can get true. these days in League. I mean, Caps was literally hitting the Nexus Towers, yep. right? Like, he was just crushing the game through side lanes and that is a rarity in modern League of Legends it and is. I think you really have to have a great understanding of how to play the matchups of how to play the map how far is too far knowing your limits exactly so you're not just getting picked off in side lanes and inting and, and GQ, G2 really showcased that well I mean again it's really nice to see as well Caps in solid form not only through the map state but the fact that Caps as well was playing a clean game well a clean enough game right I feel like in the end they were kind of playing around and um, seeing what could stick as well as, you know, Broken he Blade. Didn't die. Another good performance. That's clean. Okay, yeah, you're right. Sorry, I'm thinking of the other win, bro. One death. Yeah, one death. Yeah. Shame on you, Broken Shame Blade. What were you doing? And Come I, should, on. I should talk out Mickey because Mickey again <laughs> sees a play. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Why not? Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I mean, he was setting them up for success, had a yeah. great engage in those final moments sure. to be able to set up uh, for some of these alties here from Broken Blade. Well, I've been told that we've got a Verizon post game interview on the stage with the man himself. <laughs> Welcome back to the stage for the last interview of this Swiss day one. Top father, thank you so much for joining me. Um, great game, stable, everything. How, how do you reflect on what happened? What, what grade would you give yourself if you had from 0 to 10 from the game you played today? Um, I mean, I would say a 10. Okay. Nice, nice victory, nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But as a 10, a 10 with improvement still yeah. in sight. Always improvements. But I, I had a lot of fun playing this game, playing the brothers, you know, Yasuo I know. It was very fun, me and Caps, uh, especially later stages. I also think Yaik uh, played amazing today, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job from everyone, honestly. Did you know who was going to play Yone and who was going to play Yasuo, or did you just flip it? I mean, you never know in G2 who plays what. Uh, but in this case, I, I was like, oh, probably mm -hmm. I'll play a little bit of Yasuo today. So it was nice, it was fun, it was very fun actually. Uh, yeah. I didn't expect myself to play Yasuo for the first game. So. All right. <laughs> Any other things that you have planned uh, in terms of pick? Any spicy picks? I know in-houses have been fun, but I know that in-houses, more often than not, they don't look like scrims. But anything weird that you prepped for Walls, does the meta allow it? I know you can't say champions' names, but... I mean, there's always the something I, I prepare to, right. to win. If, also to be creative, I think. That is the beauty of my, my career, my play style. I, I, I really like mm -hmm. to pull off something that is unusual right. and also make it work. So yeah, maybe, but I can't uh, promise no. anything, of course, and I also can't leak, right? Let's not disclose anything. <laughs> we'll keep this for later. Um, <laughs> I want to follow up on the honestly amazing interview you had uh, with uh, Dom and the rest of the crew. Le letting a lot of stuff uh, that we didn't know about G2 actually, about the summer that you guys had, about the fact that you were not on the same page, that some players were feeling a bit low. Uh, when you think about this and what happened at Worlds last year and the fact that you don't want to have this run ever again, you want to have the best, you want to make the best out of the situation you have. What have you guys been working on to be on the same page, to peak at the same moment and to come ready for Worlds this year? I mean, for us, the biggest thing was uh, matching against uh, the Eastern teams when yeah. it comes to mid-game. I feel like when you look at Worlds, a lot of the times, a lot of teams get advantages in the early game against the Eastern teams, but then they, they like, lose out in the mid-game. You know, the team fights are less clutch and the macro is less good. And I feel like this year we've really been improving that. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to playing them 
again, I think in MSI we showed uh, a good performance and we want to be even better this year. Uh, yeah. Something that, <laughs> something that we hear about G2, of course, worlds being back in Europe, you think about the 2019 lineup. You were not part of it, but you have two players who were part of this lineup. And the fact that everyone keeps on thinking about what happened in 2019, the fact that there's hope for Wells, there's hope for Europe, and there's hope for G2 this year, what is the weight of this legacy? What is, uh, how heavy is this legacy of this G2 2019 lineup when you come into Wells this year? Uh, G2 2019, I wasn't part of that yeah. story. And uh, G2 2024 is a story that I want to create where we win Worlds. So yeah, that is basically how I think, how I believe. Yeah. How, what I want to make happen, and I think everyone in the team is aligned on this. This is our goal, and this is what we want to achieve. Make them believe. That's what Walt says. <laughs> Vivi, thank you so much for this interview. Amazing, as always. Last question for you. We're going to have the draw show in just a few minutes. Who would you like to face tomorrow, if you could choose? We have Billy Billy Gaming, Top Esports, Genji, Diplos Kia, LNG, Hanwha, FlyQuest. I would like to draw uh, FlyQuest, a little NA versus EU. <laughs> Love some rivalry. Thank you so much, Vivi. Good luck tomorrow. Good luck for the draw as well. That's all for us here on this side of the stage. We'll be right back for the draw in just a few minutes. Break. Is there? Three? We're the break. No? I think. I we think. just keep talking. Special guest, Dylan's here with us. Hello. Um, so Broken Blade said, uh, in terms of the draw show, he'd like to play FlyQuest, but remember, you can't replay anyone. So wouldn't it be better to beat, I don't know, Gen G in a best of one, then you don't have to play them in a best of three. Oh. Yeah, but I also feel like you get a full series win of points off of just a best of one, so yeah. I feel like the value is pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing FlyQuest. Also, the EUNA thing is always a special That's one. That's compelling. Yes. I need it. Um, but I don't know. It's a it's a very high variance draw, so it's, it's very different based on who you get. Yeah, it's crazy. How happy are you today with the performance of the brothers? Um, I like the double brothers, Yasuo Yon, double samurai comp, very G2-esque. <laughs> we played it like a bunch of times throughout the years, actually. Yeah. But usually it's the other version. Usually it was actually Caps on Yasuo and BB on Yon. So this was our first time with um, Caps BB version of G2 where we did this one. And, you know, we already asked you off air, but who, who's, what do you prefer? Um, for this meta right now, I think um, both of them are probably more practiced and better at these particular champions. I'll say that. You so like you mean back? the way it was today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thumbs up. That's a thumbs up. Right. How do you like the team's macro? Because this is like, as Elle mentioned it, it's like the truest kind of form of a split push win as you guys are just knocking on their nexus uh, throughout the game. Yeah, so anyone who's watched this a lot in Europe probably has known we play a lot with Caps on sideline this year. Um, he played a lot of split push champs. He's always pressuring to end the game, pressuring on inhibitors. Um, we've grown quite accustomed to playing that way. So a Fed Yon is like, one of the best to do yeah. that. So yeah, it, it really fits our play style. Worked out really well this game. Hopefully we can replicate it in future games. Talking about replicating, um, you know, there's always that question when you play a comp like this and when you approach it in a certain way and you say it, I'm sure that everyone who you're going to play knows that he likes to play this way. Is there a pitfall of you going into a game and knowing this is exactly how I want to play? And then maybe in the mid game, it falls apart and you're up versus a team who is maybe even better at macro or perhaps a team fighting. So like, I think sometimes the side leg comps are a bit weaker in team fight. Um, if you have a fed Maokai playing front to back in a pure 5v5, um, the brother is probably not as strong um, mm -hmm. as when he's threatening to end the game. So I think that's one potential weakness. Also, you need to be very crisp on your movement, right? As, as soon as, if Caps gets caught and dies on side and they just TP to Nash and take it, that can be another way you can lose. So it definitely, you need to be used to playing this way, but uh, we like it. Seems to work for us. Yeah. Yeah, these are very fun comps to watch as well. Probably very fun comps to play as well. And I'm wondering, not so much from a gameplay perspective, but more from a p mentality perspective, how are the boys doing coming into this world? Because usually G2, they play quite well when they're having fun. So what's the environment like having it in the studio and just everything being day to day for you guys? So it being here um, in Europe, I think helps a bit. Um, when you have to travel all the way across the world and be in a different environment, that always just makes things a bit harder. So it felt really good coming here to the studio and um, being prepared. 
Um, scrims have been good, mostly good, like a, a bit of a mixed bag, but we're learning a lot, right? As you can see, there's a lot of lane swaps. There's a lot of very different big meta shakeups. So there's just a lot of different stuff going on. Do you think that helps you guys more? Because there's been times where you guys have been winning a lot and I've seen quotes and interviews as like, well, it felt like sometimes they learned more from us than we learned from them. Do you feel like this <laughs> time around it's a bit different or how is it? Uh, like a lot of people say that. From my per perspective, I'd always just rather win, win everything. Win <laughs> Fair win, enough. Win, win. Um, it, that would probably uh, make me feel the best. But yeah, no, ab absolutely. There is that feeling of, oh, this is what's been working for us. This is what has not. So we can kind of try and have these strategies. Have you ever felt like there was a, I wouldn't say a problem, but like a motivation thing? Because like during the regular season, when you guys are winning a lot and it feels like you guys are guaranteed for international play. I, you know, early games can feel a little sloppy or some of the gameplay can feel a little sloppy. But then I, can, I guess an example would be MSI where you guys looked incredible. Um, uh, do you feel as though when the pressure is on that you guys really come online and feel like you guys come together? Or is that, you know, yeah. what do you experience? No, no, of course. Like um, when you're at Worlds, you're at MSI, you're playing the top teams in the world. Even when you're preparing for like a, a big stadium, like for the EU uh, LEC finals, um, we just get that energy and try that hard, much harder, a bit more practice, a bit more everything for sure. Mm -hmm. And of course, one of the big questions is um, you have last year's Worlds, which I know was kind of like, I feel like probably the most disappointing thing that could ever happen in, in this 600 plus day run with this particular iteration of the team. But... <sighs> I feel like sometimes um, we hear this from teams, right? They say it wasn't our day, you know? And I feel like that's something, is that something you can completely eradicate, you feel like? Or how do you feel you've made progress in that regard, knowing that, no, we are actually at a point where we feel pretty unshakable that if we are the team that does go into a best of as the favorites, that we should be able to close it out? Yeah, well, I think already this year we won every split in Europe instead of dropping one. Um, mm -hmm. We were a lot more consistent when it really mattered in Europe as well. Um, but it's, it's competition, right? There's mm -hmm. always that element of, we go into Worlds last year, beat LCK, beat LPL back to back, and then our condition became very poor when we lost. But it works the other way as well, right? We can show up to a day and play really, really well and take games or series off the best teams. Yeah. So uh, it's fun. That's like the whole reason we're here in the first place. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. No, it's true. It's, it's so exciting. It was so great last year at the end, particularly. No, just <laughs> kidding, of course. Oh uh, no, super excited. Any predictions for the draw show? I think we're super close, like 30 seconds. Any matchup you really want to see? Ooh, I mean... A fly, EU versus NA matchup play, I mean, like a fly quest point, versus right? G2, what if, please. What about like the 0-1 matchups? It's possible. TL Fnatic, it's already possible. Oh my god, <laughs> that's true I've too. I've seen that a bit too that's many times already, and I, I know how that. that one goes. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. I think a lot of people will look at who T1 draws. I think that'll be a that's big true. one. That's a good point. Oh, true. That one and zero pool is so completely stacked, actually. So it's getting ready. Great. It's getting ready. So we're going to be giving it over to the world's um, 2024 Swiss stage. Stage two, draw show. Let's go. Hello and welcome everyone to the world's 2024 Swiss stage draw show. I'm joined by Riot Games Tournament official Malu. Thank you so much for joining me on stage. And for tonight's draw, our 16 teams will be divided based on today's results. The first set of teams consists on those that went 1 and 0 today, and the second set of teams are those that went 0 and 1. Now, for the round two of the Swiss stage, there are no restrictions on matchups, which means that two teams from the same region can face off. Our 1 and 0 team consists of Billy Billy Gaming, Top Esports, Genji, D Plus Kia, LNG, Hanwha Life Esports, FlyQuest, and G2 Esports. Now, Malu, if you would please draw the first team. G2 Esports. And they will be facing against Sports. All right, now to the second matchup. Malu, please, if you would draw the second team. D 
10 plus Kia. And they will be facing FlyQuest. And now for the third matchup, Malu. Genji. Now let's show Genji's opponents. Top eSports. All right, now for the fourth matchup. Billy Billy Gaming. And they will be facing <laughs> There's nothing in the ball. <laughs> but there's only one team left, and the only team left is energy. All right, now for the O and one teams that we have. Mad Lions Koi, T1, Weibo Gaming, Fnatic, Team Liquid, Honda, PSG Talon, Gam Esports, and Pain Gaming. Now, Malu, would you please draw the first team? Gam Esports. And they will be facing off against. All right, uh, we're gonna take a quick break in the draw here and send it back to the desk for a bit. We'll be back soon. Reset. I'm thinking the draw is gonna be reset. I don't know. Dylan is hoping it's the whole draw. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's not a funny matter, actually. Yeah, um, I'm waiting yeah, for an update because yeah. we'd really get a little bit more information. But for sure, obviously, the, the second part. Um, you know what? I'm not going to speak because I don't want to give any misinformation. No, let's just, I'm uh, going to assume the first ones were correct. We'll just go over it anyways. Yeah, just the to first talk one stands, it. unfortunately. So <laughs> what I wrote, OK, so what I wrote down is G2 versus HLE. You yeah. can actually kind of talk about it immediately if you'd like to. Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, obviously one of the harder teams we could have faced. Um, one LCK, very good. Uh, Zeka played Yon today. Beast? Mm. Very oh, good. True, the oh, true. Oh, my God. Zeka versus oh. Caps is insane. Caps, Caps Yon was also very good. So, yeah, no, I, I think we can take a game off of anyone, um, especially in this setting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely one that's of the hardest. That's such matchups. a hype matchup, yeah. actually, with I that context. I think that's really cool. There was an interview with Seca as well, where the player he really wanted to play against was actually Caps as well, yep. because he's been here for so long. And I think, in terms of player profile, these are two incredibly clutch mid laners when it matters, right? Mm. And I think with a champion pool that also sometimes require a bit more mechanics, I think just from a mid lane perspective, this is such an incredible fun matchup to watch. And maybe not for you right now, but I feel like as a viewer and a fan, like that is really sick seeing two of the best mid laners go at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We will be redrawing our 0-1 team, so we're just getting that set up as um, our 1-0 and zero by, you know, literally luck of the draw, the last ball was um, just the last remaining matchup. The other that matchups, does mean that we get BLG LNG for a yes, team kill, other, but it's not for elimination. The other matchups, yes, BLG LNG, Genji Tess, D plus versus Fly. What do you think about that? The the D plus versus Fly. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm I'm pretty happy about that overall. Actually, I'm I'm, I'm pretty happy. Just from FlyQuest's perspective, I think um, D plus's games, especially domestically, were a bit messy. Like the early games are quite good. Mm -hmm. um, 
but a lot of the times when they get into mid game, they can get a little bit too hyphy. It happened today. Exactly. So like, oh my God, they had the lead and then completely threw it. And then it didn't matter anyways, because it got thrown back into them. So I think one thing that FlyQuest is genuinely good at is being able to maintain the advantages that they have. And they're a great team fighting team. And I think Inspired and Whippo, they showcased it today um, that they are able to, at least in the mid game, have a really strong uh, um, kind of like, their calls are great. They play the map really well. So I'm actually, I think that's the best one we could have gotten other than like an LNG. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good read. I think Showmaker was phenomenal Absolutely today though. Yeah. I mean, even in all the throws, he really kept the everything. I mean, he. I don't want to say he won the game for DK, but he kept no, a lot of it, pressure up specifically to write that chip. It's like, historically as well, he's just always been one of the pioneers for LeBlanc mid as well. I think he really... LeBlanc. Okay, Froggen. LeBlanc. That's bullying. I am Danish. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shout out my boy Froggen. Um, but no, I think historically and competitive, he's been incredibly gifted on LeBlanc. He's always found windows to make it matter mm -hmm. in team fights. I think there's a clear difference between a guy who need, knows what he needs to do a Blanc when you're in a mid to late game scenario and set up, up around objectives and a guy who doesn't and Showmaker is just clearly one of the best when it comes to this. Like I, I, I think it would be interesting to see how that works draft wise though and match prep wise as well because FlyQuest they had some some tricks today the whole Scion Ivor mm -hmm. and lane swap stuff and if you're gonna play mages or assassins like LeBlanc like Showmaker has been playing a lot recently I don't know how that's gonna work mid late game yeah. versus the idea at least that FlyQuest put together today so I think from a prep perspective that's a very interesting matchup. What's your favorite matchup of the four? Um, the, of course, your matchup, D plus versus Fly, Gen G, TS, BLG, LNG. Yeah, so I have to go prepare for one of those four matchups. So yeah. it's probably more the one I'm thinking about. Yeah. I think my favorite probably actually would be Dom on Fly, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the most interesting one. Um, are yeah. you? Are you Canadian or are you American? I am Canadian. Oh, yeah, okay. what part of Canada? So. I'm in Toronto. <laughs> okay, I'm Calgary, Alberta. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Is the draw ready? In 10 seconds, perfect. Okay, um, perfect time. So we're gonna kick it back over and uh, redraw, or draw rather, for our zero one teams. Take it away, Laura. <laughs> and we are back on stage now. League officials have validated the upper brackets and we're gonna reset completely for the lower brackets and the O1 teams. Sorry about that. Malu, if you would please draw the first team. T1. And they will be playing against. Pain Gaming. Now for the second matchup, the first team is. PSG Talon. And they will be facing against... Mad Lions Koi. Now, for the third matchup, the first team is... Waibo Gaming. And their opponents will be... Team Liquid Honda. And now for the next matchup. Fnatic. And their opponent will be... GAM Esports. 
These are the matchups for round two of the World's 2024 Swiss stage. We will return tomorrow on October 4 at 2 p.m. CEST. Remember that league officials will confirm the order of the matches tonight. What you see here is not the final schedule, so be sure to follow us on lolisports.com for more info on the schedule. That's all for us here. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. Still here. <laughs> we can all but say goodnight to you as well. Yeah. No, okay. Just to explain, uh, this is going out to everyone, right? So it's yeah. not because we are still here that everyone's still here. You That's perhaps true. Perhaps another broadcast. Well, we're so not well center seen. of the universe, especially not uh, as EU and worlds. Um, let's talk about the second draw. T1 pain. That is pain. wow. Pain. That is pain. It's literal pain. <laughs> They're being put through the ringer. Uh, PSG MDK rematch. That's pretty cool. How that's do you guys feel about Especially because MDK uh, won that, so that's also a revenge matchup for PSG coming into this one. TL got, I think, the hardest out of the two, like out of the draw. They could have gotten T1 or Weibo, I think, are kind of the more the trickiest ones, if we're honest. Yeah. They got a tricky one. And the Fnatic Gam, and you reminded us, GV, that uh, Dylan was actually present for the original Fnatic Gam situation. What happened there? Yeah, that was in 2017. Uh, yeah. Nobody in the world lane swapped. Not, not like these days. They lane swapped. We were unprepared. Let's just put it that way. And Nocturne, for some reason, was level six at five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it was. I don't know if that record has ever been broken, but <laughs> yeah. my support, he killed him, and he carried the whole game. Crazy. So uh, yeah, we'll see. I think Fnatic. Ah, oh, Fnatic. Their confidence is probably shook after today. And we know that when it wavers, it crashes, man. Yeah. Because uh, that game versus D+, I don't know if you caught it. It was so back and forth. They got put behind early. They got back in the lead. And once they did, they just lost their composure, unfortunately. Uh, like, I actually thought Fnatic played okay. okay. I, I thought they found a lot of clutch fights. Yeah. Um, some clutch Yonotes by Humanoid. I thought their draft ideas were decent, like, if not pretty good. Um, yeah, but when you're facing very good teams, you make a mistake late game. That's game, it. Just, game just ends, but I think they can bounce back and okay. win tomorrow for sure. Yeah, yeah. and I, I like the fact that we could kind of see Fnatic out team fight the, them out of a bad situation because yeah, their early game didn't go that way, and we've kind of seen that a couple times before now. They yeah. still have struggled with that a little bit, um, but I think it's really clutch to see that they find a way where they're not just getting tilted in the match; they actually have a way of getting back in the game. Did they throw a last team fight here and there? Was that a bad decision? Yes, obviously. But in terms of what they brought, I still think they got foundation to build on. Yeah, I'm a doomer. Don't yeah. listen to me. And oh, okay. I think I think <laughs> the bans today against Gam were all also quite good because the one thing we were constantly harping on against was like was like um, no, I'm talking about Gam. But oh. like the, the Gam drafts were actually oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very. Good, the good bands, like for instance, Aurora bands and the Shivana bands, because that was what they were actually kind of mm -hmm. abusing quite heavily in plans. So I was like very happy that that was completely taken out. So I, I have a lot of faith in Fnatic. Um, Team Liquid, kind of sad that they're going up against Weibo. Uh, as you kind of mentioned, like those are the two teams you don't want to go up against, both Weibo Gaming or T1, and we got that team. Um, overall, I think Weibo Gaming has an incredibly good bot lane, and I think that's kind of what I'm looking at. Thankfully, I think Jan and Core JJ can be able to handle that quite well. Um, and t honestly, I have a lot of faith in the coaching staff of the team. I think there's like a few moments within the game that Team Liquid had that they can just brush up and yeah. it'll be a lot better. So I'm looking forward to that matchup. That'll be a really solid one. Similar vibes from the Fnatic game, I feel like, right? When you, maybe you kind of rewatching it and you're like, oh, it's so sad they didn't close that, but you got to look at the things that did go well. Yes. And we're going to hang on to that positive, positive energy. Uh, that's it for us here. Good luck tomorrow. Dylan versus so HLE. Much. Super hype matchup. As said, we'll know the order of the matchups later, I think in an hour or something, but we will be back tomorrow at 2 p.m. CEST, 8 a.m. Eastern US. Thank you so much for watching. See you then. See you guys. Bye. This guy is like the top one in the stats in the playing. This guy needs to be so good. I think he doesn't even know your name, Sopa. Ask him. Go, go there and ask him. They off to the side. They're going to look to delete 369, but Jackie Love is still standing tall. They is going in 1v1 for Jackie Love, but he's all on his lonesome. And Dracos, they can look to end the game right now. Oh, nice, Sunimat. Who's three in your ass? Great ult. Oh, wow. Things out. Tarzan, Kai, beautiful. Joby trying to finish. Can't get too low. Oh, one dash, one auto, but there's pace. Lucid. Lucid going in, has already locked him. Humanoid, Humanoid wants to get out to safety. The ulti, though, hits a target. Means he doesn't really have anywhere else to go. Ignite, still there, Lucid! And fight after, we can fight after, guys. Yeah. Fight, 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 fight.